is about reflection. So I thought I'd just talk a bit about uh, the conference that I run. I run a conference called All Day Hate and I run an event called Hate. And I thought I'd just talk a bit about what I've learned uh, doing those events and uh, kind of a bit of a retrospective on what, what worked and what, on what didn't. Um, so I'm Josh, I run Stack, uh, which is a software consultancy based in Leeds. Um, I primarily lead teams, um, so most recently I've worked with a client in Manchester as their head of software engineering. Um, but I also kind of work to improve engineering culture, I work with teams to make them work better. And I also run workshops, so I kind of work with JavaScript and Ruby, and so I te teach teams how to, to use those technologies. Um, so let's do a retro. For those of you who don't know what retro is, uh, a retro is part of kind of agile scrum environment, and basically it's a way for you to reflect on uh, a unit of work and kind of discuss how it went, uh, how, what didn't work, what did work, uh, what you changed. So I thought a retro would be a really good framework for us to do this evening uh, as part of this reflection work. Um, but first, I just want to tell you a bit about Hay. Uh, Hay is basically an event that I started back in 2013. Uh, it's a micro-conference, um, so we do three events a year along with the main conference. Uh, and essentially, um, it started at a time when I felt there was a bit of space in it. Uh, there's a lot of specific user groups, so there's lots of user groups like WordPress leads and different specific technology groups. But I didn't really feel like there was something that was a broader kind of spectrum of web technologies. Um, so uh, I started Hey, we started to do talks about front-end uh, development, back-end development, um, startups, business, but it's, it's a technology platform, so it kind of falls under that. Uh, we quickly outgrew the space uh, that we were in, so my office is in the Fabrician, uh, based near Leeds University. Um, we quickly outgrew the space, which is a, it was a small space called the Grey Room, uh, it fit about 50 people in, I think. Uh, so we quickly kind of realised that there was a bit of demand for this kind of event. Um, so we eventually settled at the Belgrave Musical and ca uh, Canteen, which is uh, the middle floor of the King Room. It's a really good space for, uh, for events. Um, the reason I like it is it's quite relaxed, so we have all the sofas out, we have the lighting down pretty low. Um, so if you want to just kind of crawl in and have a beer in the silence while sitting in a sofa and not really doing any networking, there's no pressure to socialise, you don't have to do any of that if you just want to listen to talks. So the kind of two kind of events that we do for Hay, there's talks, which is people speaking to you, uh, like I am doing now, and there's lectures, so conversations between me and another person on stage, and then a bit of a conversation between the audience, really. Um, so some more conversational terms in the night. Um, since we started, we've had 116 contributors, so 97 talks, and four venues finally settling at the Belgrave. Uh, and I'm quite proud that we've had about 5,000 people through the doors since we started. Um, it's quite a steady flow of people through the years. But then something quite interesting happened, I accidentally started a conference. So in 2017, I was having a similar feeling around kind of a conference in Leeds. I didn't feel like there was a conference in Leeds that represented the Leeds technology scene very well, um, similar to how I felt back in 2013. So I felt there was a space that we could fill by putting on a general technology conference. Um, at the time, I was talking to Leeds Bid. Um, so Leeds Bid uh, had started, or they were looking at starting in 2017, uh, the Leeds International Festival. Um, so essentially, I was talking to them, they were saying they could probably have a bit of funding. And I was talking to my friend Harry as well, who was saying um, he, took, he just talks uh, all around the world and he agreed that Leeds should be representing better, really. So we started the conference. So All Day Hay was born back in 2017. Uh, we pitched it as an affordable full day conference for designers and front end developers, featuring some of the industry's finest minds. And essentially, we are coming into our fourth year. Uh, and I just want to kind of talk a bit about who we had uh, in the end of the year, because I think they're really good names. So Alice Bartlett from the Financial Times was just like the most amazing speaker to kick conference off. Uh, we had Katie Fenn from NPM, a uh, popular JavaScript package manager. Uh, Patrick Mann from Fastly, CDN. Uh, 2018, we had Rachel Andrew, who's um, editor-in-chief of Smashing Magazine. Uh, had Nina Kravitz from Bustle, Ian Feather from Buzzfeed, and Jake Archibald, who works on the Google Chrome project. Uh, and then this year we had Sarah Drasner, who worked at Microsoft and now works at Netlify, Sharon Steed, who did this amazing talk on empathy in the workplace, uh, and then some kind of industry favourites like Remy Sharp and Nadi Bremer. Um, so one thing I'm proud about is it's quite affordable, so 29 quid for an all-day ticket is, is pretty uh, crazy uh, in the conference world. Um, so I'm really proud that we kind of offer very accessible tickets, and we also offer diversity tickets um, to the community as well. Um, so we've had 19 contributors and 18 talks, you might be wondering why they don't add up. So we had Phil Hawksworth, 
the last two years uh, emceeing the conference. Phil is an amazing host. Uh, he's also a part-time comedian, so he like kind of keeps things flowing pretty well. Um, and he's also really good if tech things go wrong, he kind of just bounce on stage until things are fixed, which is really helpful. Um, and we're going to have one venue, so we book out the main screen inside uh, Everyman Cinema, the big screen in Everyman, and we've had about 250 people there every year since we've started. So about the retro that we talked about. So as I mentioned, retro basically, a, retro, a retrospective will cover what went well, what didn't go well, uh, and what you change. Uh, and really, you might be wondering why the function like that, because this is absolutely nothing to do with uh, maybe what you're doing, you know, you're not an event manager, you're not an event organiser, why does this matter to you? Uh, and the reason I think it matters is because this is if you work with people, so it's just if you work with any human beings, right? So it might apply to me because I'm an event organiser, it might be useful if you run meetings at work, if you're trying to improve the culture at work, or you want to get people working better together. In my opinion, these are things that I've learned uh, over time that make those things a bit easier. So the first thing that I learned, uh, which is a bit of an obvious one, I guess, uh, is being part of the scene. So for a network of, for me, event organisers, like where, where I'm at, Hannah, where I'm at, um, and, you know, share stories. So, you know, everyone has different experiences, but sharing those stories can really help for you to gain more context of the environment you're working in. So for me, understanding how different event organisers work was really valuable to understand what worked and what didn't. Uh, obviously, every city has its own characteristics. So, for example, things that work in Leeds might not work in Newcastle, it might not work in Liverpool, uh, it might not work in London. But it's really good to share stories and understand what the differences are. Also, reach outside of your network. Um, I had some amazing friends helping out in the early days, and I still get help from them now. But I, I kind of was a bit reluctant to reach outside of the network initially. So, I would just ask a lot of my friends for favours to come and speak, and actually, that in, in kind of hindsight, that wasn't the most valuable thing to do. Uh, I kind of it made the event that was only around my ideas and my knowledge, and that was a bit kind of restrictive, I guess. Um, so what I started to do is speak to people who haven't met before, speak to people who have never spoken before, and start to kind of give them a platform. And because of that, uh, I learned a lot more. Um, this is obviously a no-brainer, but support and encourage underrepresented groups. So I believe you should have diversity by taking the effort to build more diverse people. And I'm not talking in a kind of way where you have a checklist of people that you want to get just so it looks like you're a diverse conference or event. It's more just kind of taking the time to find people that you may not have discovered before and giving them a platform. Um, the other thing as well is how do you want people to feel? So when I first started um, kind of dotting around different venues before we settled at Belgrave, I was kind of thinking about how you want people to feel when they come to your event or meeting or if you want, you know, what are, they, what are you trying to do? How do you want people to feel when they get there? Uh, and the key thing here is, first time is at meetups and networking events are quite anxious. Uh, I, I certainly am anxious uh, about meeting people when you walk into a big room full of people and uh, you, know, you feel like you're under pressure to maybe uh, talk, introduce yourself, um, change business cards. You know. I kind of think, how do they want to feel when they come to this? Do they want to just sink into a sofa with a soft drink and listen to talks and then go home, which is completely fine? Or do they want to start networking with other people? So, it was kind of asking the questions around what can we do to make things more comfortable. Um, also, give people a chance and a platform. You know, we've had a lot of people speak at Hay for the first time that have gone on to speak uh, at other events. We had a speaker um, at the conference um, in the first year who did a lightning talk. We kind of invited people to come up and, uh, and talk uh, who might not have had the chance to speak at conferences before. Uh, and one of them has now gone on to speak professionally at other events and as part of his career. So give people a platform, give them a chance. Um, of course, unless that's a platform to hate, which you should definitely not do that, because that's a terrible thing to do. Uh, but yeah, give them a chance. Use the platform. So for me, I use Twitter a lot, I use Instagram a lot. Uh, I have help from friends to try and grow the network that we have for hate, and to try and make people feel a like part of something bigger. So uh, the nice thing is that if you cultivate relationships online, when people come down to the events, uh, they will feel uh, a lot less scared to introduce themselves to people, they'll feel like it's familiar. Uh, and also, have people's back when they don't get it quite right, okay? So, people who are speaking for the first time, or maybe speaking, uh, putting themselves out there, they're, they're vulnerable, right? So, speaking is a terrifying thing. And when sometimes people are on the spot, they might not articulate things quite right. Uh, in today's culture, it's quite uh, common just to jump on people and to vilify them and to, you know, 
the internet is a great place, but it is all for flat. So it's kind of have their back and support these people uh, when they're doing that. Um, so yeah, support. And also champion ideas. So as I mentioned earlier on, I championed a lot of my own ideas, which looking back was very restrictive uh, and not really in theme with kind of what I wanted the event to be. So invite people who you may disagree with you. You know, as long as as long as it's not something crazy, invite them to talk about their ideas and their passions, even if you don't agree with it, because it might open your kind of your mind a bit to to what they're saying. Uh, and also take some time to be offline. So uh, as I said, Twitter and Instagram and everything are amazing. They're amazing tools, but they will absolutely consume you if you spend all your time on them. And there's lots of bad stuff on there, so you should probably take some time out. Um, and burnout is real. I definitely burn out in the early days, try to do all the events and try to do all the work, and it's just, it is real. You need to make sure you look after yourself. Because if you don't look after yourself, you can't look after others. So, I just wish to do that, but I'm wearing a bit behind. Um, but uh, I just want to say thank you for kind of listening to me talking about this retro. It's been really helpful for me. I hope it's been helpful for you. Uh, I will be at the bar after if you want to talk about any of this stuff. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. Cheers.